I don't make any money from my content yet, so I, I feel like sharing my movie content with you guys is not doing zero harm at this moment. I still want to keep people eager to go to cinemas because I love movie theaters and I don't want to live in a world without movie theaters. Hi, hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Courtney, you can call me Quartz. Apologies, today I'm a bit sniffly. I woke up like someone turned the faucet on in my nose and I tried to take a little nap earlier, but no day. Thoughts and prayers. My brain is like scrambled eggs during this entire video though, that is why. So today we're taking a look at the trailer for Bike Riders, starring Austin Butler, Tom Hardy, Michael Shannon, Norman Reedus, Jodie Comer. Most of the actors in this film have been nominated for an Oscar at least once or twice before. I'm a huge fan of Michael Shannon, which is what initially drew me to this trailer. A lot of people are gonna come to the cinemas for just Austin Butler and Tom Hardy, which are amazingly talented actors. So, so today I think we're just gonna dive straight into the trailer and then hop into some movie trivia. Well, at the end of this video, please stick around because I have a few movie suggestions to recommend to you. I've been watching movies like crazy this summer and there's a few that have stuck in my mind. So I thought we would talk a little bit about that if you're in search of a movie to watch tonight. I have some recommendations coming up. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. It helps me out so, so much. I love when you guys interact with me. It makes me feel like I'm actually doing the do and I'm very close to being monetized. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. It really helps boost me into the algorithm. Bike Riders trailer. Grab your popcorn, let's get into it. I'm in thinking. Can't run this club forever. Oh. Tom Hardy. Why does he always slay? I built this for nothing. This Vance. is our family. You and me, kid. Awesome Butler as a biker, though. The, the girlies are not ready. Yes, please. That was a golden age of bike riders. 1965. I never felt so out of place in all my life. That's when I saw him for the first time. We would all look at Austin Butler like that. Five weeks later, I married him. I thought I could change it. So Chicago, I love it. Not to be different, but to be, I don't know, like he's wild. Hey! The wild so one. Take the jacket off. You'd have to kill me to get this jacket off. They said, don't tell me it was a good time. What about the bar? Find it down. The club got real big real fast. They started running drugs, gambling, prostitution. Is that what this club is now? I want you to quit writing. Don't ask that. Benny. Love triangle. Between him and the girl and Austin Butler's boy. True event. Know. They love to say that. If he wants to ride a bike, you ride a bike. Oh, Tom Hardy. Shine. Shine all the time. Hey, you know, I'm just. Just think it over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes his voices are a lot, but we uh, applaud him for going for it. Oh my god, that looks um I don't know. Honestly from the trailer this time I feel like I feel like I've seen the movie. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like I could go to the cinema and probably will for the performances, but I feel like I've already seen the movie. <sighs> the biker thing kind of it's kind of can be like one note. You know, like, there's not a lot of diversity in the story. It's pretty much the same story, just different cast of characters every time we see it. But having said that, let's get into some movie trivia. Let me know your opinions below. Ran and directed by Jeff Nichols. He also had a writing partner, Danny Lyon. Danny Leon? Bike Riders tells the story of the rise of a Midwestern biker gang through the lives of its members. Like I sort of mentioned, it is a story we've seen before, most notably on Sons of Anarchy, which loosely based on multiple biker gangs as well. However, Bike Riders is based on the journalistic photography book of the same name by Danny, Danny Leon, who also wrote the film. So we love it when a director <laughs> collaborates um, with authors of original text. 
can you see? Anyways, the novel is credited as one of the best documentations of biker culture in the 1960s, predating the most famous, notable biker story, Easy Rider. The last film Jeff Knuckles did was also Oscar nominated, so I feel like th because this movie comes out December 1st, it possibly could be up for the running in the Oscars. Studios are smart. They put their movies, their best movies out towards the end of the year so it's fresh in people's minds when they go and watch the award season stuff. There's a huge chance that Jeff Nichols, Austin Butler, Tom Hardy, all of those faces and names could be up for Oscars this year. This is the sixth time that Jeff Nichols, the director, has collaborated with Michael Shannon, so they work very closely together and I'm mostly, as I said, excited to see his performance. And I sort of touched on this in the trailer, but Jeff Nichols did an interview. He had touched on how he wanted to do a biker story for so long, but he'd never wanted to glamorize the violence and the crime that often is in its wake. <laughs> he did mention that he wanted to really allude to that allure of biker culture, like everybody loves a bad boy in leather. Everybody loves a guy on a bike, <laughs> all black, smoking a cigarette. Like, there is something attractive about that, which he said he wanted to be the main focus of this film. The main story follows Austin Butler, his wife, Jody Comer, and then Tom Hardy as the bike gang leader, motorcycle club leader, if you will. There's an attractiveness between all three of these characters where it does form this sort of love triangle. Jody Comer wanting to spend more time with her husband, Austin Butler, feeling loyal to his fearless leader Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy wanting the attention and affection in a non-sexual way from Austin Butler and how all of their loyalties conflict and how their conflicts arise because of that in between all of this other violence and gang activity that they have to manage. He worked really hard to create this sort of star-crossed lover triangle relationship that bodes an attraction and allure to the motorcycle culture which is idolized in a light versus glamorized. We also wanted to touch on the harsh, this is such a tongue twister, especially when you're sick, the harsh truths about America. This is kind of like a common theme amongst many Hollywood films lately. It can be a hard feat to not glamorize motorcycle culture when you have two major heartthrobs in your lead cast. Tom Hardy and Austin Butler definitely not lacking charisma or sexual energy. <laughs> on screen. Bike Riders, from the perspective of Jeff Nichols, in collaboration with Danny Leon, will be a glimpse into the dark underbelly of American crime, motorcycle crime, which we all love. As he has said himself, there's something very attractive about that. Bike Riders did premiere at the Telluride Film Festival just last week. I think it was September 6th, if I'm remembering correctly, and it is set to be in theaters by December 1st. Um, because this is a 20th Century Fox, it's owned by Disney, so in Canada we will be able to stream it on Disney Plus at some point. If you don't want to catch it in the cinema, let me know if you're going to the theaters to see this one. I think I might because star-studded cast, performances, actor at heart, I can't say no. Otherwise, if you're American joining us, um, it'll be on Hulu. And Hulu is going to merge with Disney at some point because it must just be so much for them to manage all these different streaming platforms. It makes sense to just merge them all together. And just one more time before we jump into some of my uh, movie recommendations for this week, none of these movies that I talk about on this channel would be possible without the work and labor of writers and actors and that needs to be valued. Everybody deserves a living wage. So with that being said, <laughs> I don't make any money from my content yet. So I feel like I feel like sharing my movie content with you guys is doing zero harm at this moment. I still wanna keep people eager to go to cinemas because I love movie theaters and I don't wanna live in a world without movie theaters. Who knows how long the strike goes on, you know? Okay, that's it for bike riders, you guys. I'm gonna just give you three quick recommendations from movies that I've watched in the last month and I think you might enjoy as well. First up, back in August, I went to see The Last Voyage of the Demeter, which is a classic monster in the house movie based on a single chapter from Bram Stoker's Dracula. It follows Dracula during his journey on the Demeter from Romania to London. I really liked this movie. I thought it was a great summer flick. I love vampires. I love vampire lore. I love spooky things. I love pirates. It's on a ship. And what I loved most is that this movie was set up for a really strong prequel and a sequel. So I really do hope to see that come from this movie. I know it didn't do too great at the box office, but fans online really enjoyed it. And the only people who critiqued it harshly were the critics. So if you liked it or if you've seen it, let me know. If you haven't watched it, it's an excellent, dark, spooky monster in the house 
that'll get your blood going. Next up is a movie I watched quite recently actually from the guy who brought you La La Land and Whiplash starring Miles Teller. We have Babylon. I know I'm late to the Babylon train. This movie came out I think maybe 2021, 2022. I don't know. Babylon is a tale of outsized ambition and excess that traces the rise and fall of multiple characters during an era of transition in early Hollywood. From silent films to talkies, we follow Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie in these unique, well-crafted characters that evolve and maybe don't always make it. I love this movie because it highlights the dreamy and the dark side of Hollywood in so many different ways, in story, in character, in context in even the lighting of the scenes. Really enjoyed watching all of the heavy choreography in this movie. There is so much background action. Every scene feels like a one shot. I feel like this movie really captures the roots of the Hollywood and film industry to its core. Like how this entire industry was built upon sort of a, a chaotic, wild and free era. I really enjoy the scenes where they're filming movie scenes because I feel like I can relate to that on such a personal level having worked on set and really relating to the problems that they encounter when they film. It's beautiful, it's a well-crafted film. I think that some people say it doesn't need to be that long, but why don't you give it a watch and let me know. You decide. And last but not least, I had to watch Ingrid Goes West before going to Joshua Tree because I remember when that movie came out. I had never heard of this little beautiful nook in the desert called Joshua Tree. Ingrid Goes West is a parasocial commentary following an unhinged social media stalker who moves to LA and integrates herself into the life of an Instagram influencer. Like quite literally integrates herself into her life. This movie captures such a specific trend in content creators too for its time. The use of emojis, the captions, the type of posts that are shared throughout the film. Ingrid Goes West also explores the extreme actions that someone might take when they're experiencing such a deep sense of loss and loneliness. I just felt this was a really real story, like on a hyperbolic level, like there was a realness to the story and its core. Aubrey Plaza did such a fantastic job showing us the range of emotions that she can convey in this movie and I just think it went underappreciated. So if you're in for a good, fun film with parasocial commentary, check out Ingrid Goes West. Let me know if you're gonna watch it. I really enjoyed it and it's probably something that I'll come back to and watch again. I am leaking from every crevice of my face now, so I think I'm gonna go <laughs> like this video, subscribe to my channel. I can't tell you how much it helps me out and how much it means to me when you guys drop me little comments. So I love you, I love you so much, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!